you over Command and Conquer Rivals, but uh, it's time for another one. Update on the meta, some changes to the game. Let me get my volume down here so it doesn't... Because for whatever reason, a little bit of volume comes out super loud in this recording. Um, loading up the game right now. Ooh. Glitchy. That's new. If it'll load... There we go. Took longer than it should have. All right, so I saved a, a battle of, for each of my armies. Um, got a match history. We can look at my last one for one of them. All right, so like I said, the meta's changed a little bit. It used to be the only way to run was a one harvester build. Uh, and that's not so much the case anymore. They made it to where two harvesters are viable. And zero harvesters are a lot more viable than a basic Russian than running off of that. Um, but we'll get into that more. I've played with that a little bit more with GDI than Nod so far. But let's go ahead and watch. I've not even watched this one yet. This is just the last one I played uh, with my favorite army. It's a very basic army. It's riflemen, rocket squads as uh, Nod, and then buggies for infantry and air with tanks for anti-vehicle from the vehicles. So I've got early game, medium game, and late game. I've got some powerful, expensive air units from the airfield, but not the tech lab. So that way, you know, I'm saving money and I'm getting my late game out faster. But I've got one very powerful, the anti-air phantom, which is, you know, the hit and run. And I've also got the hit and run with the uh, Inferno. So it's a lot of hit and run with my late game with this army, where my uh, early and medium game usually are trying to just hold the points. But it, it works quite well. Also, um, the Inferno and... The Phantom are pretty good at doing damage to buildings, so I can actually attack the base as well if I get to my late game stuff. But, yeah, you know, so I've got mostly the anti-rush and the good medium game fight. Uh, my opponent here looks like he had something very similar. He's got two infantry, two vehicles, two air. So this is becoming a lot more of the meta, too. Two of each. But anyway, let's go ahead and watch this replay. <clears throat> I have no idea uh, how this one went, so... And I'm going to go over each of my armies that I'm currently using this game. Now, I've changed my armies up quite a lot. <laughs> like, this one was not in my old set of armies, but it, it is now probably one of my favorite Nod builds. because it's, it's basic. It's as basic as you can get. you got your early game, your medium game, your late game, you're pushing forward. Anyway, I'm starting the top left there. He's GDI. And I still like to start with the Harvester. and They get out my Scout, my anti-rush stuff. Which he, a lot of people are rushing with vehicles very fast, so he's going for rockets, which can be both defensive and harass me and force me to do early stuff. Keep me from doing a double harvester right off the bat, which a lot of people are doing more often now. Double harvester used to be the worst thing you could do, and it's still a bad thing to do right off the bat, but it's a lot more viable now than it used to be with the uh, change to economy. Before, you wouldn't even get tech units unless you had two harvesters, most likely. Uh, now you can get tech units with one harvester, so you can pump out two and then never have to worry about money and pump out a bunch of powerful, really expensive units. Um, part of me does it like that. I wish they made it to where it was a little harder to get the tech units, and then the tech units were a little bit more powerful. Um, instead of make it to where you could just spam a whole bunch of tech units really quickly if you get double harvesters. Anyway, I did my rifleman. Didn't have to do any, uh, rocket squads early on, um... So I went for an early tank, forced him to do something else. I didn't know he'd build that air unit, but he had already pumped it out by the time I built the tank, so it was like, crap. So doing what I can with the tank, bring in rocket squads to deal with the air and possibly push the harvester harassment. Going ahead and dropping off some flame troopers, so I'm making him focus on his base, making him focus on the harvester, stay away from the points. I was hoping to win with that, but I didn't quite make it at first, so that I sent in the rifleman. Um, I bring rocket squads back, hoping to get on there in time to nullify it and then do something to get a win, but he manages to get it. Um, so that really sucks. At this point, I'm losing. I'm This is really bad for me, but you know, I go back to where his harvester and got other rockets taking care of his air unit. I'm still doing decent damage with my flame troops. Um, my riflemen, I'm just sort of getting rid of them at this point, doing a little bit of damage to his uh, disruptors so that they can't do too much to my rockets. This is really laggy. Speed this up a little bit. Now he goes for a bunch of air units to deal with my rockets and my flamers. I'm building my phantoms. I've already moved into the late game. One harvester. 
I built only one harvester, and I'm already at my late game. I'm building my expensive stuff. You know, that's going to deal with any air that he's got. And honestly, I'm not even doing very good keeping it alive. I'm just sort of holding the point. Um, I got the Inferno. Again, another late game thing. Uh, trying to get my Phantom to do his job against his air. I see these building... All those infantry units are stopped, save my rocket squad with the Inferno, and then while it can move fast, I'm charging in toward his base, because he's been ignoring that second flame guy. Um, I managed to get the Inferno to shoot his base once, so now I've done a full missile's worth of damage to his base. So I only need one missile to kill his base at this point, and I'm still doing damage to his base. I might be able to just kill his base if I can keep the missile pa timer paused. You know, If I don't get the missile, I might still be able to win this. Um... But I do think, I see, I've got another Inferno going around just to do that, but he pulls back on that, which allows me to get the next missile and win the game. Oh, no, he actually paused it. I'm sorry. Uh, that's right, I used the other Inferno to come up there, and then if it recharged, I could have blown up his base with that. But, I got the missile for the end of that. But again, yeah, I've got air superiority, and then I'm bombing him uh, for total ground superiority. I think, honestly, the Infernos are a little broken right now. Because they're only 110 cost, and they're just decimating anything on the ground. And, I mean, the only thing to fight them is air. If your opponent doesn't have air that can fight air, there's only three or four air units. There's two for each faction that can fight other air. Which, uh, it's either the, you know, for GDI, it's the Talon or the anti-air air unit. Or the Phantom for the Nod, and then they've got the Banshee. Anyway. Over to favorites now, because I saved these other five. That was just, like I said, that's my most common army. All right, so let's stick, we'll stay with Nod first here. And this one's an interesting army right here. It is a one harvest army as well, which you'll see is still common with my Nod builds, <coughs> but not so with GDI. Um, it goes for a bunch of cheap spamming early game units. A lot of cheap spamming early game, and then I use all that money they've saved up to build, uh, the Nod Avatar, and then I can just decimate everything on the ground and go blow up his base. I do have Phantoms, which are not cheap to deal with air units, um, but again, with Hit and Run, I hopefully only have to build a few. Um, also, if he doesn't build air, I don't need the Phantoms, in which case I can stick with the 30 cost, 20 cost, 20 cost, and 10 cost units. So, you know, all very cheap. And let's watch this. And of course, You'll see that I still stick usually by the three, no more than three buildings maximum. I don't do all four buildings. I do two or three. I've not pulled a build out with a single building. I think that really limits you and creates a weakness. I don't think anyone should do that. You might be able to pull it off. But at the same time, you could pull off four buildings, but you'd want only cheap units. It's not, not suggested. Now let me go ahead and speed this up a little. Because we both start with the Harvester. I got some Rifleman. He's... All right, now, let me just slow this down a little. See, I'm using two Riflemen at once to deal with his Disruptors. That's something a lot of people don't realize. Riflemen can beat Disruptors. They don't beat them one-on-one. -on -one. But if I get two Riflemen out... I mean, even one-on-one, -on -one, three Riflemen will do as good as a, a Disruptor. But Disruptor costs four times that of a Rifleman. So if you just keep building Rifleman and he keeps building Disruptors, you might be losing unit-wise, but you're definitely winning money-wise. And that's what I did early game. And he built tons of those things. Then I was able to build Venoms to counteract him and use the extra money to get out some guys to go harvest or harass. Those uh, drones are really good. They're decent against vehicles, but because they fly, they can do a lot, really good harvest or harassment. And look, I've already got my Avatar out. I got the first missile because I got those cheap units everywhere. I, I let him win at first. I got the money, used turn to air, won that. Now he's got his guys, but I'm killing his harvesters. That gives me a second avatar. Kill some more harvesters. I've got enough for a third avatar. I mean I've got he's gotta go for air at this point. And by the time he does, it's over because I'm already I've got the second missile and I'm blowing up his base with an avatar. Even if that that missile wasn't enough, I could have sent both the other avatars and just blown it up. It's they are really overpowered right now. And I do, I will use the overpowered units, I'm not ashamed to say it. The avatars are a little overpowered, their weakness is air. Um, but anything on the ground, they're just going to decimate it, especially with the leader power that you saw me use. Uh, yeah, which gives them that, like, 50% extra damage buff or something like that. That's 
for only 30 points. It's insane. Uh, it's also very useful with the Phantoms when dealing with air that may, they might not kill in one hit, and now they can kill it in one hit. Um, I don't like using it on the cheaper units, so really I'm just saving my money to get out those avatars with that army. And sometimes I will win without the avatars just because I'm spamming so many cheap units. And again, it's a one harvester build. If you go for two harvesters, I'm going to have more units. I'm going to be able to harass your harvesters, harass your base, and get the points, hopefully. Um, all right. This one is my last one for not. It's called... I called it money. I don't know why I called it money, honestly. I think I made a lot of money that match. <clears throat> but this army uses the... The vehicle that's anti-infantry for not the 10 cost one. Um, the cyber wheels. There we go. Couldn't think of it. I start off with the cyber wheels as a scout, and they work very good for countering infantry. Now, yes, rocket squads can beat them, but rocket squads, rocket squads cost 20. A cyber wheel costs 10. So much like the riflemen beating out the uh, disruptors, cyber wheels can beat out rocket squads as far as, you know, 2 to 1. And even if you're losing, like you're falling back slowly... You're winning money-wise. You're getting more and more money, and then you can pump out something expensive. Also, a very good rush tactic. Early game, if he goes for a few, a bunch of infantry, cyber wheel, cyber wheel, cyber wheel, then giga cannon. Now, the giga cannon doesn't say it does good against infantry, but once it's charged, it does. A lot of people don't realize that. And if you're fighting with a cyber wheel that's doing good damage, plus the giga cannon doing its damage, you're going to tear up those infantry... Now his infantry cannot beat your cyber wheels. The only infantry he can play to beat the cyber wheels will be like the 120 cost infantry, like the zone troopers. You know, um, and that's to beat a 10 cost unit. That's ridiculous. He's got to move to air. If he goes to heavy vehicles, he might be able to get through, but it's still going to be hard because he's using vehicles to try to push up a giga cannons. Um, and if you can keep his vehicles blocked off with cyber wheels or uh, missile squads. They're just going to tear up all of his vehicles, and you can use that push to get to his harvesters, take out his harvesters, get a huge income and money. And I use the cyber wheels as my scout early game, and I've got attack bikes for a little early har harassment uh, or anti-vehicle, anti-air. Um, I could go onto the Giga Cannon for heavy anti-vehicle artillery, you know, uh, take out scarabs, you know, whatever harassment support for those cyber wheels and then build up instead of into like a war factory airfield build up to a barracks where then i could throw out the missile squads to sort of replace the cyber wheels if he's moving away from infantry and if he goes into the heavy infantry i have chemical troopers um so again he's got to move into air if he moves into air i still have the missile squads i still have the attack bikes um and i can build my airfield i do not build an airfield with this deck unless He's building air. And then I bring out the phantoms to just... Decimate. Phantoms on all those? Okay. Um, wow. I didn't even realize that till now, but apparently I have phantoms in all of my Nod decks at the moment. They really need another alternative for good anti-air. I guess the stealth tank's good, but I kind of fell out of using the stealth tank. It's just a lot of money. It takes a while to get that out, and you really got to almost get those two harvesters to do it or make sure you're killing harvester. And it can be countered just as easy as the tank, maybe even easier if he comes at you with, like, attack bikes while it's reloading and you lose to attack bikes or something. It's just, like... Anyway, um... <clears throat> but, like I said, a, a lot of this is is cheap to medium cost units but they work together to keep the expensive units alive um or do you hit and run with the expensive units and it does really good at pushing back and like i said eventually getting that buff of money now what i do with that money is actually i use the chemical troopers i could use the giga cannon from a distance to take out an enemy base i could use the chemical troopers to do only a little bit of damage to the base but if i combine just two chemical troopers with a catalyst missile and those two clouds like if i make a cloud and next to that cloud i make another cloud and i've got two chemical troopers both close to the base that fire a chemical missile the missile goes off the two clouds goes off the two chemical troopers goes off that's five explosions that's the same that's as good as a missile so if i can get up close you know push him back maybe get the first missile blow up his base right away with my with my uh catalyst missile a lot of times that's game that's it and a lot of people in my clan, when I, they see replays, they're like, oh my god, I didn't know you could blow up a base with just two chem troopers. You know, um, a full missile's worth, anyway. But yeah, uh, 
Let's go ahead and watch. It's enough of me talking. I don't think I did the chemical uh, explosion with this one. But that is an option that I can do. Like I said, where I can try to block off things from getting my Giga Cannons. And when they charge up, even the Giga Cannons can blow up the base quite quickly. So, that, again, you like having multiple ways of winning. You know, if, he, if he's got the points and you can get past his units, just blow up his base. Or blow up his base before he can get his late game strategy. Don't even wait for that second missile. Get the first missile, blow him up. Second missile is not even needed. I'm going to speed this up as well. So yeah, I started with my cyber wheels, basic scout. I saw that he had riflemen. Wasn't worried about them, so I stayed on the bottom to see what else he was pumping out. Now he's pumping out a 50-cost unit to fight my cyber wheels. That's not a smart move. So yes, he kills one cyber wheel. And yes, he even manages to kill a second cyber Well, he didn't even finish off the second cyber wheel. So yeah, 20 points I took out of 50. And then another 10 points with what was left of that original 20. I took out another 50 practically. So I've spent almost nothing as far as cyber wheels. I was able to get out my Giga Cannon because of it. So now I'm doing the whole combo, cyber wheel, Giga Cannon. And I see his harvesters there, so I move my Giga Cannon up. And the cyber wheel, I've got someone at my door. <clears throat> Why don't you guys keep 